Welcome to Ask a Patent Lawyer with noted inventor and patent attorney, Chris Majorana. Each week, Chris answers your questions on patents, trademarks, and inventions. Now, here's Chris Majorana. Let's get started with a question. Chris, what's the difference between a trademark and a patent? A patent is for an invention that you want to protect. A trademark is for the name that you would use to sell a product. So that's the most basic difference between the two. There's also more conceptual differences. So a patent will protect and keep other people from using your inventive idea where a trademark gets developed from actual use. So you have to use your trademark in interstate commerce to start uh, developing rights in the mark. Okay, so what's a service mark? So a service mark is how you market uh, a service that's not directly related to a product. So like... In Michigan, we'll have a carpet cleaning service. And the carpet cleaning service may say, uh, they might put a catchphrase on the side of their van. So when they're driving around Metro Detroit, they uh, people see that and they call them. So there's no real product when you are cleaning someone's carpet. So the other thing that could fit in there is if they had a secret formula to their carpet cleaning solution, they might file for a patent on the secret formula and then call that secret, secret carpet cleaning formula something catchy that relates to uh, cleaning carpet. Oh, okay. I see. I understand. So h- how much does it cost to, uh, to, 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 to register a trademark? Yeah, a trademark is a lot less expensive than a patent. I mean, a patent takes a a fair amount of time and effort into developing the specification claims and things like that, where trademark's less expensive. You get a lot more bang for your buck. You're looking at roughly two to three billable hours for us to do the entire process, right, from uh, discussing the mark with you in a short interview, getting the information we need from you to prepare the application, and then ultimately file the mark. There are some trademark office related fees as well. So you have to pay a fee for each class that you register in. That's some of the details that uh, we would discuss in the initial interview with the client. So is there any types of, uh, oh, I don't know, words or phrases or or logos or, or, you know, something like that, that that cannot be registered? Sure. There's a lot of different categories that we have to watch out for. But the key thing to think about is you need a mark that's not directly describing what you're doing. So I use this analogy a lot that seems to work where if you're a golfer, probably have heard of Callaway Golf Clubs, and they have this driver that they call a Big Bertha. So it, everyone just thinks that that's the Callaway Golf Club because they've heard it so much. But right. if you step back, before they started calling it a Big Bertha, you would never think, if, if someone said, can you hand me your Big Bertha, they would laugh at you. So now it's developed the name for their their specific driver. So if they had called their Big Bertha driver instead, like a great big golf driver, it's going to be very difficult to register that as a trademark because it's so descriptive of what's going going on with the product. Okay, now how long does it take to get a, a, a trademark registered? Uh, trademarks do go a lot faster than patents. So we usually hear from the trademark office in a, roughly six months after we file. Then you have a six-month time period to respond to the trademark office. You can use the whole six months if you like, or you can, if you're in a, more of a rush, you can file quickly if you're looking to get it registered right away. But you do have, you know, usually, so roughly about a year once we start to finish. 
Now, do I have to be using that mark to, to apply? Yeah, there's two different types of marks. You can have an actual use where then you'd have to write down your date on the application of when you first used the product or service in interstate commerce. And then if you haven't used it yet, but you just want to see if it is able to be registered as a trademark, you can do what's called an intent to use application. So can I apply myself? Do I, do I need an attorney? That's always a personal choice. I mean, you could, you know, fill out a mortgage for your, yourself if you want it without an attorney, but it's usually better to get an attorney. We know the ins and outs of these things and can potentially avoid many, many fit, pitfalls that would hurt you down the road. Okay. Now, um, what, what if I find somebody else is using the mark, but, the, but they haven't registered it? Can I, can I just go ahead and attempt to register it or what, what happens there? It's always, uh, analysis of who used the mark and when. So one of the neat things about registering a trademark federally is that as long as you are using it in two states, like say Metro Detroit and Ohio, that counts as interstate commerce. So you could potentially register a mark, not even know that someone in California, say in Silicon Valley, is using the mark. And then if if they ended up using the mark afterwards, after your registration, then for sure you could make them stop using the mark. So there's some overlap if they were already using the mark a little bit and uh, you got your registration somewhat in parallel with theirs. You may block them geographically from expanding. You may call them to cut a deal, something like that. This happens a lot with franchises where that can be an important thing on what your plans for expansion are. So, Chris, how does uh, this re- relate to uh, protecting a, a, a URL or an Internet domain? Yeah, a registered trademark is a very powerful tool when it comes to protecting your domain name. So if you've developed the goodwill in your mark to the extent that you get your mark registered and you just didn't get around to filing for your domain name, you can file a dispute to just extract that domain name from whoever filed. So what happens a lot of times is people file a bunch of domain names that are close to yours as like an attack type of situation. But the trademark law doesn't like that. So they're literally going to let you walk in and just take over that domain uh, without having to pay the, you know, these fees that these companies want to get from you so that's their game is they try to there's no way they can steal your domain name if you have a federal mark i mean i say no way but i mean there's the the details are what make all this analysis go together but in general that is a very powerful thing on your federal mark is to be able to protect that domain name thanks for listening to ask a patent lawyer with noted inventor and patent attorney Chris Majorana. Join us next time as Chris answers your questions on patents, trademarks, and inventions.